in our church, our expenses to the church. And then we have the mission and helping missionaries to do the work of God. Now I want you to hear this. The money for the church, and this is some of the pitfalls of uh, some, with due respect, and I'm not talking the negative. The number of responsibility of the money of the church is not for the big building. The money for the church is to be able to continue the work of God to proclaim the good news. To raise the poor and the fatherless. There's a church in Colombia and 50% of the people in Colombia are below the poverty line. And the church there, they build one plus million dollars of the church. And so, now, I, I, I love to say this lovingly, and it hurts my heart when I attended 12,000, maybe 10,000 members of a big church in Los Angeles, a big up church, I'm so sorry, a big up community in Los Angeles, south of Los Angeles. Now, the people who were attending there were handicapped and poor, depending on those, some are rich, and the church amounting to maybe $3 million, beautiful building, but the members are only receiving $600 a month that are giving their tithes. And the big, big building right there where the houses are old and dilapidated, if you can see in the spiritual eye what's happening with the money with the big building, and the people are so poor and they're not expanding to the horizon where church is being planted, where people are being visited, uh, single mothers are hurting and dying, some are committing suicide, sending missionaries. Big churches are there and loving and respectfully. The one working, they believe, he said, by this year I'll be earning $1 million and I'll be driving a Rolls Royce. Uh, that's wrong context. The money is not to be used for big building, it has to be used primarily to win souls and to be able to cope up with the day-to-day, week-to-week responsibility so the work of God will continue. That's the primary reason. So we can build other churches, disciple pastors and missionaries one day, and God permit, we can build five to ten churches. We are not confined to a beautiful building until Jesus returns. We we'll use our money. Yes, we deserve to have a building. We love it. But more than that, we love to see souls come to know Jesus Christ rather than going to hell. That's the heart of the ministry. So the money has to be used for the expansion of the kingdom of God so people can be ushered to Jesus Christ. I want you to see this and I'll be finishing in a few minutes. Now, in the New Testament, I want you to hear that we are not under the law and Christ is the example of a very generous and gracious God. He gave the best, His life. Now, in the New Testament, you cannot see that there is the tithes is mentioned, but to, uh, to those who are giving tithes, that's just the start, and that's good. Because in the New Testament, God loves a cheerful giver. I want you to, to, to take note of this word, and from there you can understand what I'm trying to convey to you. Because the tithes is just a starting point where we can give to the Lord. Don't give it just forcefully. If you are giving it forcefully, please don't give it. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And God loves generosity. Number one, listen to me. This is the standard of the New Testament. Though tithes is not mentioned, every one of you will set aside a amount of money every week. Designated for the Lord. Now, if the Old Testament people, by the law, they can give 10%. To start with, we can give 10% of our income. But I want you to hear it is just as we grow in the Lord. Number one, the Bible says, Romans 12, 1. By the mercies of God... Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. First thing we can say, because God is so good to me, He bought me with a price, 
everything that I own, my house, my car, my family, uh, my, my table, the food on the table, gone even the last borrowed breath that you own, it's coming from me. And God is saying, Gani, because I bought you with a price, everything that you own, glorify me. In other words, Gani, I will talk to your heart and then respond to me and I will obey the Lord as He's talked to me. So number one, we can honor God with all body, mind, and spirit and give it to the Lord. Body, soul, and spirit giving to the Lord. Number two, Jesus Christ talked to the, to the, to the crowds. If anyone would like to come after me, number one, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Listen to the word. 8, 34, 35 of the book of Mark. Next word. Anyone who finds his life shall lose it. Anyone who lost his life for my sake in the gospel or proclaiming the word of God shall find it. So the more I gain money for my own self, Ghani, you are losing it. And the more you are spending your life, by your time, and properly manage your family, and faithful to the responsibility of your debts, and then faithful to me. The Bible says, if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. But if you find life in this world, you'll lose it. And then it goes on to say, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but lost his own soul? And so we can see here, God said, Whoever, so in the context of giving, God, my priority, and God knows my priority, my wife knows my priority, is toward the kingdom of God, towards you. To me. I can be a blessing to you, you can be a blessing to me. I have no ulterior motive of serving God for other personal gratification and satisfaction. I am complete. I have God with all of my heart. I have my family. When it comes to my need, I, I don't need anything. I am complete. So it's number one. And another say, God said this word. Okay, look at the birds on the air. They never, they never sow. They never harvest. They may never put it in a barn. But God feed them. Number two. Look at the lilies of the valley of the fields. They open up in the morning. In the evening there is courts and they are dead. Shall not God give you the clothing, the worry that you have in your mind? Shall not God will give you the things? And God said, seek you first the kingdom of God in His righteousness. Listen to the next word. In all the worries and the desires and you need shall be added unto you. So the first thing that we can see in the teaching I told you before is our aspiration is toward the kingdom of God, our priority. So we can see in a form of giving to the Lord, it is God, when I worship you, I want to be obedient to you. It is not to threat you. God is not threatening you. Give 10% or 12%, 15%. God, when I come to you, what my left hand is doing, my right hand doesn't know it, I want to let you know, I love you with all of my heart. And so, as I close to you today, The Lord will continue to bless us and continue to empower us with His blessing. Number one, God desire for us is restore to moral life towards God. Lord, I want to be have a moral life before you. I want to be realigned with you. Number two, Lord, my material restoration, there is a promise of blessing to me and my family, in my work, in my promotion, my protection, my relationship with my husband, my wife. When I apply for work, the door is open, God, material restoration. Lord, I will give what is due to you lovingly. And result, there is a life of abundance, spiritual, family, physical, financial, blessing to all, blessing you, become a blessing to many people. And so, the church is not in the business of having big buildings, but we deserve one day we have a good sized building. But our priority, Lord, our money. We pray that many people, we are not after number. I have no intention about number. But as long as we have the strength and the ability to talk and to reach out people, that is our heart. That's the heart of Jesus. In the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, if there's any other way where I can save humanity, who was crying in agony, in pain, but he says, not my will, there's no other avenue or any kind of exit. I must die and shed my blood 
and uh, be crucified a horrible a brutal death in other words God is revealing to him because of that because of his love to the world Jesus Christ is willing to die on the cross so that is where we're heading to our faithfulness to the Lord I close with this wonderful story of a great English general and because of his brilliant service in China, the government of England was giving, giving him the most momentous, wonderful kind of a gift for the brilliant General Gordon is the name. And titles and everything. But he declined all the money, listen to this word, he declined all the titles but accepted a gold medal on which his name in a record of his 33 engagement was inscribed in that gold medal. Money title? No, no. Do it somewhere else. Just the medal. 33 engagement. After his death, the medal could not be found. It was learned that he had sent it to the Manchester during a famine with request that it be melted and used to buy bread for the poor. In his diary that day he had written these words, this great man general, the last and only thing that I had in this world that I valued, I have given over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, what a joy to serve God. I'm not challenging you, I have, you have the heart. You, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. I have the heart. And I don't want to say more because I have given everything to the Lord. My last breath, my family. So today, what a joy to obey Him. To live morally straight. To give what is due to Him. To be faithful to our husband and wives. And then, you can see the abundance of the Lord. When we move together in this kind of worship, we'll be hearing more and more, not only weekly, but every day. Answer prayer after server, answer prayer. Not because of what we can do, but because obedience is better than sacrifice. In a part of Brahms, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice. And so the Bible is very, very clear. The blessing will come. So let's move forward. And bless the Lord for His faithfulness and His goodness, even this afternoon. Father God, we thank you so much for this afternoon. Thank you for teaching us to understand that obedience is better than sacrifice. That the Father brings. In stubbornness, as a son of Lord, you can see stubbornness is another kind of a, a, a kind of idolatry. In Lord. I pray that you'll bless our hearts, bless our minds. Lord, we will not justify our words. It is very open and plain because we want to love you and we want to serve you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <coughs> now today we're going to...